set. What's going on you guys? It's Keenan Briggs, athlete, coach, and mentor. We're going to talk about personal trainers, speed coaches, and track and field coaches. Three completely different elements of athletics. They're completely different. A personal trainer, their goal is to get people in shape. Their goal is to motivate, typically to lose weight or to reach a goal. They're very beneficial to people, but when it comes to track and field athletes, they are on the lower end of the totem pole. Speed and agility coaches, they are very helpful. Why? Because they're an advanced version of a personal trainer. Now you're going to be doing more explosive movements, maybe some running, maybe some plyometric. But the knowledge of a speed and agility coach are typically either specific to a certain sport, but not specific to a specific event. For example, a speed and agility coach may have you running around the track, may have you doing intervals, may have you doing agility quickness things, working on your foot speed, all those things are going to help you. But a track and field coach has to understand the biomechanical movements, has to understand the strength training side of it, the developmental strength training side of it, and also the events itself. A track and field coach can explain how to fix your triple jump. They're going to explain what it's going to be like when you're at this track meet. They're going to be there at the track meet. They're going to be there at all of your track meets. They're going to be able to motivate you when you're feeling bad. They're going to have a whole four-year plan from when you're a freshman to when you're a senior of how to make you the best athlete possible. They're going to know you as a person inside and out and on and off the track. A track and field coach is essentially a speed and agility coach and a personal trainer all together because they're going to need to know how to train you in the weight room. Now, specifically for jumps, we have to have a basic knowledge of how do we train you in the weight room to where when you push this weight it's going to have a direct influence on you and your body when you're on the track. Now a speed coach may have some ideas of what needs to be done but typically they may not know specifics of ins and outs of track and field. And track and field is a genre. There's close to 16 events. Now when it comes to speed and agility it's just one basic concept. Now there are many instances where you could have three separate coaches. All these things can work, they could, but typically there's not enough hours in the week, there's not enough days in the week to where you can actually balance your training with rest and homework and etc. When you have multiple coaches, there can be a conflict and many times the conflict isn't with you, it's with the message and the philosophy. So now a track and field coach will say, I have you for four years in high school. I have you for four years in college. What I want to do is get you from where you are now to this by the end of four years. When it comes to a personal trainer or a speed coach, they have you for 12 sessions or they have you for the rest of the month. And their goal is to provide a good service to have your parents or yourself pay for next month. And there's a huge difference of why they're there. Now there are some good coaches out there that are speed coaches and there are some great personal trainers. But trying to bring a personal trainer or a speed coach into a track and field environment, they become lost, they become flustered because the, the mentality of track and field is completely different than personal training or speed training. Now when it comes to rest ratio, when it comes to weight training, Olympic lifts, you can go on and on with what you believe in as a personal trainer, as a, as a speed coach, and also a, a track and field coach. They're completely different. My suggestion to you is you want to go with the person that has the most ability to take you as far as possible. Now don't get me wrong, you could have multiple coaches and you could be very successful with it. You're going to find your own way of handling things. However, where the athlete always tends to fail, typically an athlete tends to overtrain. Let's say your track and field coach has practice during season, five days a week. Now you have to figure out how am I going to get to my speed training coach twice or three times a week? Or how am I going to get to my personal trainer twice or three times a week? If you try to balance all of them and say, well, I'm going to leave track and field practice early to go to my speed coach and then go to my strength coach after or whatever it may be, all you're doing is adding more time under tension on your body. Now time under tension basically is just you performing. And you performing, if you're going through performance all the time, plus the stresses of classwork, relationships, just life in general, there's no time for you to rest and recover. 
then you're going to find your immune system weakening. You're going to be in a very bad spot. And you're the person that will end up on the bad side of the stick because you're overtraining. You got to figure out how can I schedule in my training, my life, and rest. Always make sure you factor in rest and you schedule rest to help you be at the best you can at all times. Remember to click that subscribe button. I have new videos coming out every Tuesday and Thursday. For very detailed and exclusive information, make sure you visit KeenanBriggs.com.